This is the Kingdom of England, circa 1066. Duke William of Normandy has been crowned and has become known as William the Conqueror and is now King of all of England and sets about administering his kingdom. He intends to bring peace, justice and decency to this fair land. To ensure peace, Duke William sends an envoy to the King of France asking him for trade rights and terms for an alliance, which the King of France's representative, Guillermo de Lyon, gladly accepts. See, buddies. We shall speak again. Nobody better friends than the English and the French, I tell you. The alliance with France guaranteed peace on the continent, and before the year was out, made present in the King's court was a diplomat from the most noble King of Scotland. In negotiations, it was agreed that not only would they trade, but they would have an alliance. How about you give me some money for a price? That's, that's totally balanced. Yes. Indeed. And so the English king settled down to administer his kingdom from London. In the meantime, he sent family members, such as Prince Rufus and Prince Robert, to pacify rebels and those counties and countries that saw no allegiance to any higher power. All of this was completely within feudal law and perfectly aligned with the nature of the alliance that England held with Scotland and France. The Scots and the English had had a friendly competition of who would conquer the rebel city of Bruges first. And it looked like after many failed Scottish attempts, the English would be the ones to finally claim it. Except suddenly, during the very moment of victory in the siege, there was a great betrayal by a mere French captain who ambushed Prince Robert with an army of far greater size. What are you doing? Sorry, are you, do you feel like you have the authority to declare war on England, Captain Robin? I mean, okay, all right, all right. War with France it is then. Prince Robert's army, however, was not really prepared for a war against a great power like France. Prince Robert led a small army that consisted mostly of peasant levies, with only a few hundred trained male knights. And so surprise worked against Robert, and the battle did not go well. What had began promisingly enough turned into a very hard-fought and bloody fight, and then the English morale began to collapse. The peasant levies, unused to this level of intensity in combat, were flanked from the right and began to rout. Okay, this isn't on, is it? It's not fucking on. Uh, don't you? Oh, Jesus Christ. I think we've lost this one. My be worth uh, getting off the battlefield and seeing if I can save him. God damn. I'm not used to losing battles. Can't even remember the last time I lost a battle. What the hell's happened here? Right. That's it. It's the scouring of France is what's going to happen now. Prince Robert was defeated and was forced to flee back to England to raise a new army. And in the meantime, the French pressed their attack and besieged the ancient Norman stronghold of Caen. This they, outnum they outnumbered the garrison of Caen by a factor of more than two to one. But Captain Robin, the stout-hearted fellow put in charge of the defence of the city, was not prepared to yield. But uh, but we are we are going to fight to the last man. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Captain Robin only had 450 spearmen, organised in three units. He noticed that the besiegers only had one set of ladders and one battering ram. And he wondered if this could be turned to his advantage. He placed one <laughs> unit of spearmen on the wall to receive the ladders and those who had scaled it, it okay. and the other two in front of the gate to wait for the battering ram and its crew. The men on the wall had one job, 
defeat the invader at all costs. This town militia, this one unit of town militia, had to be defeated, and within moments, the gate was broken open and the French horde rushed in. The two squads of spearmen in the main courtyard then had to perform their sole duty. Hold the line. Because Captain Robert had noticed that in fact, we could scale down the outside of the castle using the enemy's own ladders. In the brutal melee that happened in the gateway, the enemy's general was cut down. Oh, you don't underestimate the English peasant with a fucking spear. This stroke of fortune guaranteed the success of his plan and the defence of Cairn. Because the French army, now leaderless, was about to fall into a trap. Just hold the line, lads. Hold the line. We have a plan. Come on, come on. Only intervention by the Almighty or a military genius can bring us victory. Look, God always seems to intervene on the side of the French against our military genius, okay? So we're going to have to see what we can do. Mwahaha. <laughs> That's right. How the fuck are we outflanked? Yeah, how indeed? How, in how indeed did you get outflanked by the English? Sorry, sorry, what was that? God Almighty or a military genius? Well, I don't see God anywhere. <laughs> That's right, Frenchman. Where are you going? Where are you going? Why are you running? Eh? So I thought you wanted to come in the castle. <laughs> Heroic victory. Love it. Absolutely crushed. <laughs> Ah, that's right, I will bask in that praise. Captain Robin had saved the English position on the continent, while Prince Robert returned to England and began raising a new army. Prince Rufus came down from Nottingham and met him with 160 mounted knights, 1,000 peasant levies. This army, Robert would take his revenge. Robert sailed back to Normandy and picked up another 240 mailed knights, the finest Norman cavalry. And with this mighty new host, he marched directly for Paris. The French, in their part, seem essentially unprepared for such a vicious attack. And Robert was at the walls of Paris before any significant organised defence could be mounted. Desperate, out of time and out of options, the local French nobility and the king himself mustered those knights that were in his location and a large militia from Paris and sallied forth to engage the English prince. For his part, Prince Robert was not messing around. This time he was not caught unprepared. This time he was going to absolutely crush the French. And he caught the vanguard of the French army separated from the main body and unable to be reinforced. And so he annihilated it. Wait, wait, are we just going straight forward, are we, guys? Yes. Yes, you are. It's too late to run away now. Boom. After wiping out the vanguard, he wheeled his army around to confront the main body of the Paris militia, led by the French king himself. Don't act like this is somehow my fault. There I am, besieging the Flems, and the French king took that personally. What? Fuck off. I'm a bit worried about the size of his army, though, actually, now I think about it. I mean, we've got a pretty sturdy force here, but... But the trick is to kill him at the beginning of the battle... Which is what we're going to try and do. And then rout his peasants. No, he's too close. We just got to go in. 
And how about you go around the back? Okay, he's not loving this, is he? Not loving this. What's this? Yeah. Spear militia, eh? Can we kill them? Maybe we can force them to run away. It's a good idea, isn't it? Like we've done with the French king. <laughs> Basically already in retreat. He's literally sacrificing his own men to slow the English down. Okay, look. This is actually slowing us down. I'm not happy about this. I mean, we're obviously going to massacre all these crossbowmen. <laughs> oh no, that didn't work either. I can't believe it. Right, okay. I'm actually a bit worried about my king here, so let's let's uh let's route some spearmen for a moment. There we go. Oh, I see my king's right there. Brilliant. Well, King, Prince Robert, but, you know. On the battlefield, same difference. Come on! Oh, shit, I didn't even see them. Where are you going? That's right. The enemy king lies dead, slain by our gallant warriors. Boom. Attack while his Look, I didn't want to kill the King of France, okay? I didn't I didn't I didn't declare the war. I just ended the war. The enemy are badly bloodied. Mm. They have lost half their men. Mm. I can't believe that the militia of France wasn't the equal of the chivalry of England. By the grace of God, our foe is utterly vanquished. You had this coming. Remember this day. Remember it as the day of our most glorious victory. The English had taken thousands of prisoners and put them to the sword. This left Prince Robert virtually unopposed at the very gates of Paris, which is almost undefended except for a small band of men who arrived too late for the battle, whom Robert simply drove off before laying siege. Right. Guess what you're going to be funding. That's right, industry in England. I will sack that, right. But moreover, I'm going to raise it, apart from the, the Pope's church, because he'll be pissy with me if I don't, Literally just done. Done. Raise Paris. Oh, look at that. 12 grand. Thank you. Didn't... You could have just let me take Bruges. You could have just let me take... And you know what, right? I might, I might well march over to Bruges and take it anyway. And this is precisely what Prince Robert did. And while he was besieging Bruges, the Portuguese and the Scots managed to find themselves embroiled in a war. And as you can see... The Portuguese navy was hanging around the docks of Dover. In the years, Milan had also besieged and captured Paris, but we'll come back to that in a minute. At this point, a small Scottish fleet tried to force the passage and attack the Portuguese navy, drawing England into Scotland's conflict with Portugal. Admiral Nigel, not wishing to embroil England in yet another international conflict, decided that discretion was the better part of valour, and did not engage in the battle. The Scottish navy carried the day and drove the Portuguese off. In their foolhardy passion, they pressed on, and to teach the English a lesson, blockaded the port of Cairn. What was that for? What, because I wouldn't declare war on... Listen, you 
fucking retards. A, get off my port. B, get off my land. Okay, I actually need a diplomat to go deal with Scotland all of a sudden. What are you doing? If you march south, I'm... I'm just, I'm just going to be very disappointed, Scotland. All right. King William the Conqueror had died of old age, and the throne passed now to King Rufus, and he had sailed over from England to besiege Bruges, while Prince Robert laid siege to Paris. I love that the French just have no plans. To... Bro! <laughs> just mercenaries. <laughs> I can't conquer anything with Scotsmen. <laughs> okay. Edward of Scotland and King Rufus of England squared off in a royal battle outside of Bruges. King Edward's mercenary army put up a brave and bold but were not the equal of Rufus's disciplined freemen, wielding the longbow and the billhook. <clears throat> yeah. That wasn't great, actually. That was not great. I'm not happy with that. King Rufus conquered Bruges easily, and then the Milanese rallied against Prince Robert outside of Paris. I'm going to annihilate Paris, then I'm going to come and get you. Jesus Christ. What, one squad of Italian spear militia? Looks like they're going to need reinforcements, to be honest. There is no way they're going to win. Man, these guys are way optimistic. I'm, I wouldn't even be on their team. Can I swap sides? <laughs> Get them, boys. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. The enemy general flees like the coward he is. Press onward and break the spirit of his army. It's devastated. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. The enemy army flees the field. This is a clear victory. The go Didn't take long, did it? And in the grey, dreary rain, Prince Robert took possession of Paris and decided its fate. Hmm. Come on, chat. What's it going to be? Sack or exterminate? I can't both. Well, the uh, exterminate is definitely getting uh, getting the most responses in the chat. So, Paris had it coming, by God and Saint George. With the French king killed and Paris devastated, King Rufus turned his attention to Scotland. King Rufus sent a simple message to King Alexander in Scotland. Bend the knee, or suffer the same fate as your father. Alexander refused the demand of vassalage, so King Rufus sent his young but bookish son with a large army straight towards the Scottish capital. However, he was intercepted at York, tried as a witch, and burned at the stake by the Inquisition. A Danish raiding force had captured Nottingham while the army was marching on Scotland, and so the king dispatched Prince Robert to recapture Nottingham. And so the job of disciplining the Scots was left ignobly to a one Captain John. The Scottish army had outflanked and surrounded the English army. The 
And so Captain John had to think fast and decided to split his forces, half to deal with the Royal Army and half to deal with the reinforcements. This will either be brilliant or ridiculous. Back off a bit, boys. Battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. I'm feeling pretty steadfast. St. George protects Damn it. Us. Our general lies slain upon the battlefield. Not good. <clears throat> If you run away, then we definitely lose. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, you fucking cowards. Honestly, you're like a mile away. How did you know he was dead? Just nail him, for Christ's sake. Yes, yes. Come on, get him down. Oof. By St. George, our men have Good. slain the enemy general. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. Just one random rogues. Good, good, good. Around them. Oh, oh, have we all come back, have we? Pursue and run them down. <sighs> that, was, that was a lot more tough than I was expecting. This is a clear victory that goes to Ugh. the men of Ugh. great virtue. It's not, not a good victory, though, is it? <laughs> I didn't think I was going to have that. The Scottish troops were put to the sword, and though Captain John had died in the battle, it still broke the back of Scottish power. 
leaving Edinburgh almost totally undefended. And yet still, the Scottish king refused to capitulate. The Scottish crown still possessed a considerable navy, so the English constructed a navy of their own, and like the Romans, beat them at their own game. The Scottish royal family had holdings in Ireland, and King David rallied what support they could for a final last-ditch assault on the English army besieging Ooh. Edinburgh. Okay. La last battle before I have to go. I love this. The Scots have now got an army in Ireland, and yet Inverness stands proud and independent. Oh my god, come on. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Caligloss pretty cool with his big axes. But you're against archers, so. Just saying. <laughs> I'd like to have dealt with those mercenary crossbowmen, but they'll have to wait. is very much in our favor the enemy king lies dead Boom. slain by our gallant warriors so we've captured the prince we've killed the king scotland let's talk about that vassalage shall we so i don't have to execute the prince the battle was a devastating defeat for the scottish and to avoid exterminating the royal line the english captain released Prince David. It was over for the independent crown of Scotland right. now. Reduced to Listen, their buddy. impoverished holdings in Ireland. Yes! The King of Scotland bent the knee. Yes! And let that be a lesson to you. Don't make an alliance and then double-cross England and expect to get away with it. Justice was served. Everyone got precisely what they deserved. Happy St. George's Day.